Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back for Flip Class. Today we're going to talk about this word right here and this pretty thing back here, which is well, crazy looking, I'm sure. Uh, so this word here is pronounced meiosis. I know it's spelled meiosis. Just remember, it's meiosis, not your osis. It's a German word, so you say the second vowel, which is weird. And this thing uh, behind me that uh, looks all crazy, this is actually an egg with a crap ton of sperm all over it. So, yep, we're going there today. We're going to talk about making the zygotes. A uh, zygote is a fun word. It's basically uh, the original cell that was once upon a time you and uh, everyone else ever, always, forever, anytime in sexual reproduction. So, let's get into it. In order for sexual reproduction to take place, we've got to make what we call the sex cells. Now, sex cells is not just what advertisers rely on. It is also the word for our cells that are our gametes. Before we can talk about gametes, though, you need to know that all the cells we've been looking at so far, including those onion cells in the last lab, those are called somatic cells. Som is a word that means body. So these are the cells of your body body attic cells. These are normal cells. They're made during mitosis and cytokinesis. Gametes are what we call the sex cells. Now it's very important that you call them gametes because sex cells could mean a lot of things. Are we talking about ovaries? Are we talking about testes? Are we talking about, you know, other stuff? So yeah, call them gametes. Instead of sex cells, we're talking sperm and ovum. That's the singular of ova, which ova means egg. So these are the ladies' eggs that we're talking about here. And these are made by meiosis, different from mitosis. And what's really sweet is you have two rounds of cytokinesis here. You get a double, double, splitty, splitty. And we'll talk about that. What that's going to do, though, is because you still only have one round of interphase, that's actually going to reduce the amount of chromosomes by one half when you do meiosis. So normally, right, mitosis, we double the DNA, then we split it into two. Here we double the DNA, we split it into two, we split those two into two more, that's four. So we're making four cells with half the amount of DNA. Somatic cells having the regular amount of DNA are called diploid, which is abbreviated 2N. This is the normal number of chromosomes that you should have in your body after S phase. We're talking 23 pairs, right? Remember, you got a chromatid from mom, a chromatid from dad. They double up during S phase, giving you chromosomes. You should have 23 pairs then, a mommy pair and a daddy pair because that's how babies are made. Sorry, children, it's not the stork. Gametes made by meiosis, they're haploid because they have half the DNA. We abbreviate that with N because one N would be half of two N, you know, math and stuff. Don't be scared. So uh, what do we mean by a diploid? In order to make a diploid cell, you actually take two haploid cells and whoosh, fuse them together into one. Here's a pretty picture of that happening. That one diploid cell is called the zygote. So you take your eggy, you take your spermy, together, ba-bam, zygote. Now keep in mind, you can see it right here, they're showing you just one chromatid. Remember, you've got 23 here and you'd have 23 here, but they, you know, they pair up. So you got the chromatid A, chromatid A from the sperm, and then they are A and A all hanging out together. They will make, during the S phase, a whole nother one to go with it from mommy and a whole nother one to go with it from daddy and make your fun time chromosomes joined at the center. The zygote to throw back to the old unit, that is actually a stem cell as well. So it's going to divide, differentiate, divide, differentiate, for on and on and on and on and on. This is the ultimate of stem cells. This can turn into any, 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 anything. I'm not just talking pluripotent. This is the stem cell of all stem cells. Uh, a few fun facts, because I know you're just going to Google up some more about sperm and eggs anyway. Adult males, you make 100 million sperm every single day. Uh, those of you going through puberty, you are now almost on the verge of reaching what we call maturity. Not maybe necessarily emotionally, but sperm makingly. You're going to make 100 million every single day. That's fun. There are 60 days until fertility for each of these sperm. So before their sperm, their spermatids. After 60 days, they're going to be full-blown baby-making sperm. Ova, on the other hand, actually do not develop after birth. Ladies, you were born with, on average, one to two million 
eggies that need to be, you know, eggified when you're born. And that's it. Those are all the ova that you could potentially ever have. About 300,000 are left when you start losing them. So, you know, the number is even lower because not all of these actually turn into eggs. For more on that, uh, just Google up eugenesis, which is a you know, very complex process that we're not going to talk about. And uh, only 400 really are ever released in your lifetime. So, yeah, you, you're working with a lot less genetic material for the offspring than, uh, than the boys are, which is kind of unfortunate. So let's talk about meiosis. Meiosis, again, you've got uh, your regular cells, they divide, they make the haploid cells, the haploid cells come together, ba bam making the zygote. That right there is sexual reproduction, right? And that's how you are a blending of the, all the things from your mom and all the things from your dad. All right, remember, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes in your normal cells, and that's after S phase which means gametes just have 23 chromosomes, period. That's it. How's it work? Well, like I said before, there are two rounds. So the chromosomes, they get copied during S phase of interphase, just like there were before. Then you do two rounds of meiosis with no second interphase in between. It goes interphase, divide, divide. As a result, the chromosomes line up as tetrads at first, and in round two, after cytokinesis twice, you would have four cells so remember, this is different, tetrads, when they're lining up, they're always lining up in tetrads in meiosis, at least the first round of meiosis. Remember in uh, mitosis, I told you it was important that they go single file. Meiosis, pay attention to how they line up. How do they know where to line up? Well, every single one of your chromosomes are at different sizes. So this is your first pair, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth. So they're going to line up together in what we call homologous pairs should be both the ones, both the twos, both the threes, both the fours, both the fives, and so on and so forth, once they're getting all chromosome -y. So let's get into the phases. There is a prophase one, because there's two rounds. Don't forget, we do do interphase by first. The homologous pairs, those are these things over here. The homologous pairs, they get all paired up together. And this weird process called crossing over may or may not take place. It says here it takes place. It doesn't always take place. You can actually predict for every, you know, a thousand times that prophase one happens. You can predict with a certain accuracy how many times crossing over will happen. So it's sort of a random occurrence. And like before, the spindle fibers are getting ready to spindle fiber. Crossing over is kind of a fun process. Uh, it happens relatively often. In this process, homologous chromosomes actually swap DNA with each other. That results in what we call genetic recombination. It takes traits that were all from your mom, mixes them with some of the traits that were from your dad. And so it can actually link or unlink different traits based on if it came from your mom or your dad. And what that does is it increases genetic variability. We're gonna talk a lot in the next coming months for pretty much the, almost the rest of the year about why genetic variability is important. Remember, we looked at in populations, right? If you don't have a good diversity within the species, it creates like a bottleneck, it's harder for that group to survive. Well, here, we're gonna do some genetic variability. This is one of the other reasons why no two people are alike. Because not only are you unique combinations of your parents' different genes, but we're also, in prophase one, flipping up and mixing the genes a little bit more. Now, here's how I like to think about it. So you got the daddy and the mommy chromosomes. That's a homologous pair. Let's say it's chromosome number two. So here's chromosome two from your dad, chromosome two from your mom. They get all up on each other, as you can see, right in this area here, and they start playing footsie because the love that your parents had for each other didn't just stop with them and went down to genetic level. That's not really true, but it helps me remember it. And But they're playing footsies, and they played footsies so aggressively that they switched socks with each other, uh, which would be a pretty impressive feat that would take probably a while. But that's uh, essentially how it works. Playing footsies, switches the socks, now we've got a little bit of the mommy on the daddy chromosome and a little bit of the daddy on the mommy chromosome. After that, you have metaphase one. In metaphase one, your homologous pairs, they form what we call tetrads because there'd be four chromatids total over the two homologous pairs. They line up two by two in the middle with the spindle fibers, doing the spindle fiber thing from the centrioles. Just this time, instead of attaching on each side of the chromatids, they're attaching to whole chromosomes. See? 
attaching the whole chromosomes. So then when anaphase happens, two chromosomes go that way, two chromosomes go the other way. Anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are pulled apart by the spinal fibers, not the chromatids. We're dividing the mommy chromosome and the daddy chromosome away from each other. Now it's worth mentioning, back here in metaphase 1, we have this really cool thing called independent assortment. You'll notice that you've got the blue one here and then the blue one on that side and green and green. Remember, this is only showing you two pairs. You have 23 of these. And the mommies don't all line up on one side, the daddies don't all line up on one side, and it doesn't go every other mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, 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 daddy. It can line up however it wants, as long as one is together, two is together, and it doesn't even have to be in that order. It's called independent assortment, and this is the number one most important thing you need to know. Metaphase one, they line up two by two, independently of how the other chromosome pairs are sorting themselves. As a result, you have millions of different kinds of combinations of gametes that you can make. So not only do we have that crossing over, that adds a pretty good amount of genetic variability. This is the money shot right here. This is the reason why you could make babies for, well, you shouldn't, but you could make babies forever and ever and ever for very long amounts of time, and there's a very low chance that you would have two babies that are exactly the same. So again, in phase one, uh, the centrioles, sometimes also called centrosomes, are pulling, pull the chromosomes apart from each other, they go to the opposite ends of the cell. Then you have telophase one, pretty much looks like regular telophase. Here are the chromosomes all piled up and nucleus starts to reform. Centrioles are hanging out and they actually uh, go away because after this you need to have some room for a shytokinesis. Shytokinesis comes in just like before. Wow, and divides that bad, bad cell into two bad, bad cells. Here's a pretty full picture taken with an electron microscope showing you cytokinesis. There's a a lot of cytoskeleton action happening in here, as you can see, and it's pretty. But we're not done yet because we've got to do round two. So then we have prophase two. No interphase before. It just jumps right into dividing again. The centrioles are like, crap, guys, it just got done working. But they come back out for more, and they start spindle fiber, and the spindle fiber all up, and the chromosomes do not pair up in tetrads this time. In fact, prophase two looks just like prophase from mitosis. You have metaphase 2, you're looking at the picture, you can probably see, oh, that looks very, very similar to what I've seen before. Because here, the chromosome, they line up in the center of the cell. Uh, they don't line up in pairs. It says, uh, yeah, the chromosome, those are the pairs of chromatids. Spindle fibers do their thing. It looks exactly like metaphase in mitosis. Then you have anaphase, again, doing the same thing, looks exactly like metaphase or anaphase from mitosis. Then you have telophase, remember, the only thing different here is you have two cells doing this at the same time, so you're going to have two cells, four nuclei, doing their thing. Keep in mind, these nuclei here are now haploid. They only have half the DNA that they used to have before, but yeah, the whole thing is going. Two more rounds, when all is said and done, it's going to divide one more time you're going to get haploid cells. That, boys and girls, is the process of meiosis. Double rounded, the first round is the different round. The second round is the one that looks pretty much just like mitosis. Here's a fun little picture. You can see there's prophase one, lining up in pairs, splitting the pairs, telophase, splitty splitty, no interphase, that's a dirty lie. Prophase two, there it is. They're doing their thing. Metaphase 2, they line up single file. Anaphase 2 looks just like mitosis. And then cytokinesis in both those two cells giving you four haploid cells that would then get later modified into either sperm or egg cells depending on which one of those gametes you make. Remember, boys and girls, the moodling is for moodling. So get down there in the doodling and do your moodling. Thanks for watching, everybody.